Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 7th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And you're probably familiar with WhatsApp Messenger, a very popular instant messenger application. Well, if you downloaded it recently from the Google Play Store, be aware that you may have downloaded actually a fake version. Apparently, someone managed to upload an application into the Google Play Store called Update WhatsApp Messenger. This is luckily not too malicious. It's really more an adware spam application application and uh, in order to trick the user into believing that this is a genuine WhatsApp application, they did use a developer name called WhatsApp Inc followed by a space character in Unicode. So this way it actually showed up as a different developer than the original WhatsApp Inc, but it does look just like the original and is very difficult this application apparently was downloaded over a million times before Google removed it. In general, this is a very common trick that in particular spammers are trying to impersonate popular apps like this. In this case, in particular due to the Unicode space at the end of the developer name, it was pretty difficult for someone to distinguish the valid and the invalid application. And if you're familiar with anime, you may have heard of Crunchyroll.com, a website that features various anime movies. If you visit the site this weekend and were redirected to a crunchyviewer.exe, then please read Crunchyroll's blog post because you are probably infected with malware. Crunchyroll.com uses Cloudflare like many sites in order to protect itself from denial of service and also reduce the bandwidth with requirements of running the site. Well, apparently someone managed to break into Crunchyroll's Cloudflare account and used it to redirect users to another malicious site. Cloudflare does offer two-factor authentication via Google Authenticator, Authy, and also a generic time-based one-time password scheme. I believe this is the second time in about as many weeks that Cloudflare was used to redirect users off websites to malware. Crunchyroll doesn't state if they have any idea how the hacker gained access to the password, but in the past, what happened was that these passwords leaked in other breaches and then were reused for Cloudflare. And then of course, that hacker was able to break into the Cloudflare account. And Cindy Murphy of Gilbert Digital Forensics wrote an interesting blog post about how to recover formally encrypted backups from iOS. In this particular case, she had an iOS 10 iPhone that had some encrypted backups on it. So she had access to the phone, she had access to iCloud, but she didn't have access to these encrypted backups. The problem is now if you create another backup in iOS, then it will also be encrypted using that password that you of course don't know. Well, uh, what Cindy was able to do here was to actually upgrade the phone to iOS 11. As she states, that's of course a fairly dangerous process if you're trying to recover data. But in this case, it was sort of the only way to gain access because in iOS 11, 11, you're then able to reset the password, create a new backup with a password that you actually then created yourself. And she was able to retrieve additional data from the phone. Pretty interesting method. So if you're running into this problem, take a look at her blog post. If the phone already runs on iOS 11, then of course you don't have to do the update. 
And apparently Comcast today had a major outage affecting large parts of the United States. As far as I have seen so far, this wasn't security related. A peering issue between level three and Comcast appears to be the most likely issue that caused this. So that's why we didn't really cover it in any more detail, but uh, we'll stand by to see if Comcast has any more details about what exactly happened. And last week, I asked for feedback on some issues that users have reported with uh, this podcast, with in particular downloading the MP3 files based on uh, numerous emails I got from users. And thanks again for everybody reporting these problems. It looked like uh, this was an SSL problem. Actually, the problem here was that Libsyn, the company I'm using to host the MP3s, has a pretty tight and good TLS configuration for their web server, but a lot of the older podcast applications appear to have problems with this, even if they are running on up-to-date operating systems that should support this version of TLS used by Libsyn. For now, I removed HTTPS from the MP3 files. I only offer them via HTTP. Let me know if this fixes the problem. In the long term, I may offer an HTTPS and an HTTP version of the RSS feed. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.